We're with you in moments, big and small. This is Polk Today Video. The 2022 Eggs and Issues Breakfast hosted by the Rotary Club of Polk County on Thursday morning featured four of the 14th District Congressional candidates in the primary race and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene's campaign manager. Polk Today Video presents their presentations at the Eggs and Issues Breakfast, sponsored again by the Rotary Club of Polk County, in individual videos for each candidate this year. Check back after a word from this Polk Today sponsor to listen to what those candidates seeking office this year had to say. The time is almost here. Joe Nichols is live in concert at the Cedartown Performing Arts Center on Friday, March 25th. Only a few tickets remain to see Joe Nichols on stage Friday. Visit cedartownshows.com to purchase your tickets now and reserve what seats remain for the show starting at 8 p.m. Go online to cedartownshows.com to learn more about seeing Joe Nichols stop in town on the Good Day for Living tour. Are you, are you all ready? Okay, let's do this. Uh, the ne I'm going to introduce the next guy. I, I saw his video and was blown away. Uh, I, did you get it done like Netflix did that, man? Like, like your campaign video, dude. It's like, dude, it's crazy. Um, yeah, uh, so welcome to Rockmart, Marcus Flowers, the man with the cowboy hat, army vet. Uh, so get up here and let people get to know you and uh, tell, them what, tell them what you're about. Please welcome Marcus Flowers. Good morning, Rockmark. Good morning. I'm not unfamiliar with Rockmark. My daddy taught here in Polk County for 31 years, so I'm very familiar with Rockmark. I live right down the road in Freeman. But for those of you who don't know me, I am Marcus Flowers, a proud Army veteran and Democrat running for Congress, 21 seat Marjorie Taylor Greene here in Georgia's 14. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I was born in Troy, Alabama, birthplace of John Lewis my icon. would love to follow his example, and I'll get back to that in just a little bit. Now, I didn't have your typical childhood. At 11 years old, I moved into a children's home because my family, like many families in this district, quite frankly throughout the country, faced some incredibly tough times. That's a life-changing experience. Kids made fun of me for not having decent clothes, not having decent shoes, for not having my parents around. But that gave me a strength. And it taught me how to deal with bullies at a very young age. At 18 years old, I joined the Army. And I swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And that's what I've been doing for the last almost 30 years a soldier, a defense contractor, and a government official with the Department of Defense. From, let's see, I've done humanitarian efforts in Sudan, peacekeeping missions in the Balkans, and I spent a decade in Iraq and Afghanistan, both in and out of uniform, serving our country faithfully and honorably. Now I've seen heartbreak, where one night, you're sitting on a forward operating base, what we call the FOB, F-O-B, having a laugh with a friend, and the next morning, that friend doesn't make it back from the mission. I'm talking about mothers and fathers of young children, sisters and brothers, sons and daughters. I've had the pleasure of working alongside some truly great American heroes throughout my career. And it's been the honor of my life. But on January 6th, watching what happened at our Capitol, while I was sitting at home doing an audit report, because my background is in compliance and logistics, something changed in me. Now, the previous two years before that, I'd watched George Floyd being murdered at the knee of a police officer. That moved me as well. Now my granddaddy was a sheriff and a farmer. My uncles were police captains. So respect for the badge was total for me. 
but watching a disinformation and misinformation campaign that grew louder and louder over the course of that summer kind of brought me out of my shell of being a nonpartisan person who worked for the Department of Defense my entire career. Then on January 6th, I saw the culmination of that misinformation and disinformation campaign. Seeing police officers beaten with an American flag while a Confederate battle flag was being paraded through our Capitol Rotunda. The very next day, I resigned my post as a government official and decided to run for Congress against Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now, why would I do that? Because I'd watch Marjorie Taylor Greene spread disinformation and conspiracy theories throughout the entire summer before she was elected. I'd seen the wild conspiracy theories that she was espousing. She was part of that disinformation campaign. I watched her speak to Proud Boys shortly after she was elected. I'd reached out to Congresswoman Green, got no response, of course, and said, walk back some of the things you're saying. That's not who we are in this district. The people here in this district are kind, caring, and generous people. I know that because I've been a part of this district since I was 12 years old. Back and forth from Alabama to visit my father. I taught at Cedartown High School for 31 years. I know the people here, good people, my people. Now, since I started this campaign, didn't know what I did. Knew nothing about running for public office. Had no idea. Did a campaign ad, as Josh talk, told you about. And since then, more than 300,000 people decided to invest in this campaign. That means invest in our district. We've raised over $6 million. I want you to think about that. Over 300,000 people said we believe in Georgia's 14th congressional district. Some truly great Americans like Ambassador Andrew Young, Senator Jen Jordan, who's a great senator here in the state of Georgia, who's running for, to be our next Attorney General. Congressman Eric Swalwell, and may he rest in peace, Senator Max Cleveland endorsed our campaign before he died. National organizations like Vote Vets, Collective Pack, Congressional Black Caucus have endorsed our campaign because they believe, just like I, that we can get back to a place in our Congress where there's honor, decency, and integrity. Look, we've got to stop treating each other as enemies simply because we have a different political view. We've all seen too much of that. We've seen the bitter partisanship in our government that stagnates growth for us. Our con Congresswoman is getting nothing done for us. Nothing. The way I see the job is you work with your local leaders, your mayors, your city councils, your housing authorities, your boards of education to drive funds to the district to accomplish the needs that we have here in our district. That's how you get work done. That's how I view leadership. Governance is serious business for serious people. We've got to do more for our seniors, our veterans. We've got to fix our health care system in this country. And in order for all of that to happen, we need true leadership and true representation. I'm running for Congress to provide that leadership and that representation you not to go up and be another bitter partisan voice in DC but to work across the aisle to get things done that's the job now, in order for all of that to happen I'm going to need everyone here tonight to deliver or this morning to deliver let's stand up let's organize and if you'd like to join our campaign our deputy campaign Mo manager Molly Rohr is right here sign up for our campaign, make phone calls, knock doors like I do every day and talk to the people here in Georgia. Thank you. Hey there folks, I'm Kevin the Editor. Thanks for tuning in to Polk Today's YouTube channel. 
do us a favor and give this video a like. And if you really want more free local news and sports content, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we have new content available. So if you could just go ahead and hit those buttons, that'd be great. Thanks.